By mid-April, the stars of winter are setting in the west to make way for the relatively star-poor skies of spring. The constellations Orion and Canis Major are setting in the southwest, taking with them the dazzling stars Betelgeuse, Rigel, and Sirius. The yellow-white star Capella is still high in the western sky, and Castor and Pollux, which mark the heads of Gemini, the twins, are nearly overhead. This west and south part of the sky is still fairly rich with the stars of the Milky Way. Ursa Major, with its star pattern the Big Dipper, is easily visible overhead. The two front stars of the bowl of the Big Dipper point northward towards the star Polaris. This star is less than a degree from the North Celestial Pole. Polaris is also the tip of the tail of the constellation Ursa Minor, also known as the Little Dipper. East of the Dipper lies the bright yellow-orange star Arcturus in the constellation Boötes. And north northeast of that, you'll see the unmistakable sight of Corona Borealis, the northern crown. Just south of the zenith, following the arc of the ecliptic, you'll see several constellations of the zodiac. Leo is overhead. Its mane and head look like a large reverse question mark, and its body and legs point eastward. Further east, look for the constellation Virgo with its bright blue-white star Spica glittering in the lower southeast. West of Leo lies the fairly dim constellation of Cancer and the brighter Gemini. The V-shape of Taurus, the bull, is setting in the west along with its bright red star Aldebaran. In the northern hemisphere at this time of year, you're looking out of the plane of the galaxy into the depths of intergalactic space. That's why you see so few bright foreground stars in the sky. But a telescope will reveal hundreds of distant galaxies in this region of the sky, especially the galaxies of the Virgo supercluster, which lies just southeast of Denebola in Leo and under the handle of the Dipper in Canis Venatici.